Well, what's going on guys and welcome back to a new video. So for those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Joshua Daniel George. I own a social media marketing agency called Brandpreneur here in the Netherlands. And I also have my own coaching business where I teach you guys on how to do the same. So how to start your own social media agency, how to get your first client and then scale it so that you can live life on your own terms. And uh, this was quite an interesting request from uh, Pablo from the Lifestyle Design community, by the way, guys, for those of you that are not in the Lifestyle Design community just yet, it is a free private Facebook group uh, which will be linked in the description box down below where you can basically surround yourself with like-minded people and there's a bunch of free resources from me in there as well as uh, a free ebook a free social media marketing mini course um, you know along with a few other little freebies and uh, tips tricks etc everything is in that community so uh, consider checking that out if you are serious about starting with uh, social media marketing but like I said um, I got this request from Pablo he mentioned or he basically asked me, you know, is my content on YouTube, um, like some of my older content, is it still relevant? So, um, you know, obviously, as you guys know, I push out a lot of content. Um, I, it's getting to the point now where I think I'm up to five uploads a week, something like that. And I have been doing this for years, like literally since I think the end of 2017 was when I started posting my first um, like social media uh, videos. So, you know, I've been here for a while and you know, obviously I have all discussed almost every single topic related to social media marketing. And then Pablo's question was, you know, are the older videos still as relevant, um, you know, as the more newer videos? And is it worth, you know, going back to all those videos if you are, uh, you know, only now just tuning in or discovering my channel? By the way, guys, before we actually start this video, we have reached 5,000 subscribers, um, which is amazing. You know, I'm it's, it's weird because I remember as if it was yesterday when I just started this channel. I was, I've still got screenshots when I've got like 300 subscribers and I'm checking like stats every single day. I remember uh, checking my social blade and it's like literally like one subscriber extra every single week. So one a week and then it was two a week and now I think it's like... Uh, anywhere between 10 and 20 a day, which uh, is amazing to see the channel, you know, finally grow and uh, pick up a little bit of pace. So yeah, thanks very much, obviously, for those that have subscribed. For those that haven't yet subscribed, um, you know, if you want to see more content like this, then make sure you do, because like I said, I am uploading almost five times a week now and trying to provide you guys with as much value as possible. But without rambling on too much, what I'm going to do today is review one of my older videos, uh, not a vlog or anything like that, a value-based video, and basically give my comments on it and see if it's still relevant in 2020. So without further ado, let's hop into the computer and uh, we'll basically check out one of the videos. No, I don't waste no time. So here we are on my YouTube channel. Um, let me see. So what we'll do is we'll go to uh, videos and we'll sort by, shall we sort by oldest or most popular? Let me see what is by oldest. Um, uh, this is actually like almost like the fit, like two years ago, like one of the fitness uh, slash content creation videos. Um, what I will do, because these are quite short, let's see if we can review a long one. What I'll do is I'll do most popular and then see if you can find an old video, day in the life, day in the life. By the way, guys, for those that don't know what this is, it's basically a plugin to make sure that you are as productive as can be. Um, so if you switch on this, um, basically all of the videos will remove and then you can only use YouTube as like a search function. So it's uh, really, really good uh, for those of you that have trouble um, with procrastinating or just get distracted easily by um, you know, YouTube. So um, day in the life, day in the life. Um, High income skill. I can't even remember what this was about a year ago. How to get social media marketing clients in 2019. To be fair, that might even be a, that might be a good video um, because you know obviously everything is about social media marketing on this channel. Uh, but because this is a year ago, we can check out and see if it's um, still relevant as it should be. And we can also check out the search ranking to see if there's anything going on. This video ranks quite well, as you can see here. Um, it ranks first for how to get social media marketing clients in 2019, which is pretty cool. Um, and yes, obviously, always like your own videos, because if you don't, then no one else will. Okay, so let me just full screen this, and then where's the sound? Ah, there we go. There's the sound. Check it out. The old intro. I missed that intro. The only reason why I switched this intro was um, because of copyright. 
on my Instagram stories? You know, is there anything that you'd like to see from my YouTube channel? Any type of tips you want me to provide or any questions uh, with regard to earning money online that you'd like to see answered in my YouTube videos? And I got bombarded with questions on how to get clients for social media marketing and then, you know, in specifically nowadays, so 2019, um, you know, are there any new methods of outreach? Are there any new ways to get clients? Let me just quick check. When did I upload this video? January 7th, so it's longer than a year ago. We don't feel confident enough doing cold calling. We don't feel experienced enough to do the cold calling. And I'm not saying that cold calling is a bad method of outreach or anything like that. You know, it's a very old school proven way of True. getting your clients or reaching out to clients. But nowadays there are easier ways, especially when you're just starting out and you don't feel confident enough to do the cold calling, there are easier ways of doing outreach. And myself, I have never done a cold call in my life. I'm probably not good at it either. So, you know, there's that it's a good job. That Fun fact, in the Netherlands, cold calling is even illegal. You can't even do cold calls uh, in the Netherlands. And I think they can actually complain if you do, you might get fined. And a lot of people, the try doing outreach through Facebook, but they don't do it in the right way. So what I want to show you guys today is how to actually do it and do it in an effective way. So the way we used to do it is by finding businesses online, you know, go to the Facebook page and then uh, send them a messenger uh, message, you know, through the, through the Facebook messenger, um, you know, feature on the business page and we'd never used to get a reply. So we used to be able to see that someone read it, but no one actually replied. So what we actually do now is okay. Facebook. Just fast forward because I'm just rambling on here. I'm trying to figure out what the what method of outreach I'm going to use for this. Uh, we start off with Facebook. We look uh, in our niche, so our niche is e-commerce. So we look for e-commerce businesses uh, that have a Facebook page. Oh man, why did I not full screen that? That's annoying. And we check out what type of ads are they running? Are they any good? You know, are they I remember that when we used to be able to see info and ads. Uh, Facebook no longer have that. Obviously, uh, you now need to go to page transparency. Um, and this is when I still have my own Facebook account as well. Unfortunately, that is uh, that's now banned, so I can't use that anymore. Is the copy okay? Well, how is it created? Anything like that? Anything we can give them, um, you know, feedback on any value that we can provide. What we then do is we go on to Google Chrome because there's a Google Chrome extension called Facebook Pixel Helper. Uh, I remember when I discovered the Facebook Pixel, I was absolutely buzzing because it was such a quick way of basically finding out if people are running ads or basically tracking data or not on linkedin to see who the owner is then once we find the owner of the business we then find the okay so what i used to do um was uh basically find a business on facebook that is running ads if they um if they weren't running ads or to be fair even if they were i used to find the business see what they're doing see if they've got the facebook pixel installed and then i used to go on linkedin and uh, find that business owner um on linkedin and basically try and find out who that person is the name and then add that guy on facebook i used to remember that was used to be a very effective way of doing it um, I think a lot of people do it nowadays, so like people have discovered this method. Um, plus, uh, not every business is registered on LinkedIn, so it's it's good if it works. But if it's not, um, you know, you basically waste the time doing a little bit of research where you could have been sending out like an email blast or anything like that. Owner on Facebook. So rather than contacting the business page, we contact the owner on Facebook. But before we do that, we actually ah, uh, remember the AM Club. Shout out to everyone who was in the AM, AM Club, which is like yeah, basically. Before they had the Lifestyle Design community, that was the, the, the Facebook group. Facebook as a friend, and only when he accepts that friendship request, do we send him a message say, you know, hey, um, you know, thank you for accepting me as a friend on Facebook. Um, you know, I checked out your business page just recently, and, you know, I've got a few tips for you. I've got you know, a few things I'd like to discuss with you. Is it okay if I send you either a screenshot, a portfolio, um, a case study, anything like that. Okay. Uh, I think this might might have been before I discovered Loom. I'm not 100 percent sure. Um, I was quite early to the party in terms of Loom. I think around this time I did discover it. Um, but what I do now, rather than sending a portfolio or a screenshot or anything like that, I just ask them, you know, is it okay if I send over a quick video with some ideas that I've got, and then I send the Loom. Um, so I'm curious to see whether I still mention that or not. So don't pitch your service right away. Ask them if it is okay to send them X, Y, Z, you know, whatever value you've got. Uh, I said that in one of my previous videos, um, like I think from yesterday maybe, 
um, depending on what, what order I upload them in. But basically, it's uh, what I do is I sell the meeting rather than the service. So rather than promoting my service right away, I basically, you know, um, ask them for a micro commitment. So the first one is obviously, uh, is it okay to send over a video? The second one might be, um, you know, is it okay? Do you want to hear more about this? Let's hop on a call. Asking if it is okay. Nine out of ten times they'll say yes, that is okay. If you pitch your service right away and you know aim for the call right away, they will just ignore you because you haven't built up that rapport just yet. So again, a mistake that we made is, um, you know, I learned in university that you know that you shouldn't pitch your service, but you should pitch a call. You know, so ask them if it's okay if you can call them or is it okay to set up a call. But what I've noticed uh, with this method of outreach that aiming for the call on the first point of contact doesn't work either just ask them if it is okay to provide value if they say yeah that's, that's good advice man i uh it's weird like, actually watching like my i don't watch my own videos back because obviously i record it myself so i know what i'm going to say and um I, I, so after you've edited the video like for those of you that make their own videos you'll know you know, after you've edited the video that like there's already been like five times where you've seen the same piece of content over and over again and as soon as it's uploaded like i'm basically sick of seeing that piece of content so i don't actually watch it back uh, but looking back like, like i said this is a year ago this is this is still very relevant it's evergreen and in my opinion that's that's good advice to, to get started you can ask them you know um did you get my message okay have you looked through it yet and only then you know if they reply to that, you can ask them, okay, you know, is it okay if we set up a call? Or if you'd like help with this, you know, is it okay if we uh, set up a meeting or anything like that? Okay, so that's the first method of outreach. I've already sort of mentioned the second method, which is LinkedIn, obviously. So what we do is we find business online that we can help. Again, we check, have we got the Facebook pixel installed with the, uh, the Facebook pixel? I don't actually use LinkedIn, like hardly ever anymore. I should start using that a bit more. If there is, we add them on LinkedIn and send them a you know, sort of the same message. Okay, so we ask them, you know, just check out your business. Um, I've got a few ideas for you, or I've got a few things I'd like to bump by you. Is it? By the way, that message that you send on LinkedIn, if you do it, um, it can literally just be the same message as you do on Facebook and email. So you'll basically have like a three pronged attack. You'll have email, Facebook, and LinkedIn. And there's a small chance that they'll ignore all three messages. You know, if you're going to reach out on every platform, um, obviously don't do it too much because you might seem a bit um you know desperate but you know if you basically have multiple touch points there's obviously a smaller chance of them ignoring you altogether okay if and then you know whatever value you provide okay so you've got facebook messenger where you contact the business owner so not the business the business owner and you've got linkedin where again you contact the business owner why the business owner because you don't want to be dealing with gatekeepers okay so we used to contact marketing managers or public relations managers anything like that and these people have not got the right or the authority to you know, give you uh, or take you on, um, or for you to take them on as a client, basically. Okay, they haven't got the authority to do that. They cannot say, okay, you know, um, you can take us on as a client. Only the business owner or the decision maker can actually do that. So make sure you don't deal with gatekeepers. Make sure you do deal with the business owner. Okay. Another method that is really effective on getting in contact with clients is by sending a loom. So oh, that's sick. I, the, this year, I didn't expect my... Uh, so as you can see, at January 7th, I already discovered the loom method. Um, and yeah, like I said, loom is such a uh, powerful way of doing outreach. And like I said, a year ago, I was already preaching the loom method. Um, so yeah, it's def definitely something that it's withstood the test of time, obviously, because a year later, I'm still raving about Loom. And um, like I said, you know, it's just a really, really effective way of getting your point across without seeming very salesy because it's just a small video. Micro commitments, all they need to do is watch the video. They can see that's a personal piece of outreach and, you know, it, that you're putting in the effort to reach out personally to them rather than just sending out a mass blast. Loom is a quick video message that you can send, but rather than sending the video file, um, it's like we transfer where the, 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 the file gets saved in the cloud for like a certain amount of days, and you can just send them the link. I think Loom is, uh, it, it stays in the cloud forever. I think, I'm not 100% sure, but I think. We transfer, we send the we transfer link. You can send them the link of the Loom. If you click on that, you can see your video, and in the left bottom of the screen, they can also see your face. So see, they can see you talking, and they can see, see your screen at the same time. So again, you know, you can show them, okay, you know, I'm on your Facebook page, I've looked at the ads you are running, and I've got feedback on this, this, and this, and this. I will do it this, this, and this way. Um, is it okay if I send you a case study on how this worked out the last time I worked with a client? Or is it okay if I send you our portfolio that we built up with results that we've got previous clients? Is it okay, you know, blah, 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 okay? So again, you know, Loom, you basically send the same message, 
put in a video message which makes it a bit more personal because they can see you are talking about their business rather than just you know spreading out random messages okay you can also send a loom through facebook you can send a loom through linkedin but you can also send a loom through email okay so a lot of people ignore email. that's what we do nowadays but is send them via email personalize a video through loom you know by email then you know there's a bigger chance of them replying because they know it's not spam it's not an uh, email blast where you've sent out mass emails. What we do now is we send out an email blast asking if they want to see the loom that we've recorded, which we haven't actually recorded. And then as soon as they reply saying, yes, send it over, we record it. So it's like a sort of like fake audit strategy, but um, it works because, you know, you send out the blast. Let's say you send the blast out to 100 businesses and 20 of them reply. Then you record the 20 looms. And then in the loom, obviously you ask, you know, is it okay to send over this or send over, uh, if you want to hop on a call, etc. But, you know, that way it's an easy way of, uh, you know, it's, it's mass outreach, but it's also personal as well. For those that reply, they get a personal message back. It's actually a personalized email to them. A great thing about Loom is as well that you can get a notification if they've watched the Loom. Okay, so we sent out, I think it was four Looms yesterday. And we've already got three notifications. Four looms, as if it's like, as if that's a lot. Like nowadays, uh, like I said, we do mass outreach, and like it, as soon as they reply, like it would be like some days I will send out like maybe twenty looms if twenty businesses reply. Um, but I, I like the fact that I I basically was saying that four looms as if it's a lot, which is funny. But um, yeah, like I said, it's good advice, and the like the the message that you get when people view the loom is great as well because like I said, you can just immediately just send them an email again saying, hey guys, uh, so you just viewed my loom, you know, what do you think of it? Um, you know, is this something that you might find interesting, yes or no? So three emails came back saying, you know, person X has watched loom one, person X has watched loom two. Okay, so, you know, out of the four businesses, three businesses already have watched our loom and now we're just waiting for them to reply. If they don't reply, then we'll send them another follow-up message saying, hey, you know, uh, we saw that you check out our loom. Uh, is it okay if we send over our case or we'll do anything like that? Okay, so just like a little quick follow up with them. And the last method that I highly recommend you guys use is freelance websites like opaque.com, like peoplebethour.com, like freelance.com. You know, these uh, people that post jobs on these freelance websites are actively seeking your service. So you don't need to convince them that they need social media marketing. You don't need to convince them that they need Facebook ads because they already know that and you're already actively seeking someone to do it you know, for them on their behalf. So all you need to do is reply to that job post and convince them that you are the right person for the job. And you know, uh, you, what you need to do here as well is make sure that they realize that you are not a freelancer, you're not gonna work for peanuts, you're not a virtual assistant, you are a business owner, you own an agency, you've got a Yeah, it's still relevant, all of this, to be fair. Um, and we still use Upwork. Well, we, we now we no longer um, apply for jobs on Upwork ourselves. You know, we've got virtual assistants that do that, but the method still stays the same. You know, we still look on uh, freelance websites like Upwork. Um, and yes, you know, the Upwork method is is no longer as powerful and as effective as it once was, but it's still a very very good way of getting in um, a few little extra clients here and there because it is low hanging fruit. These people are already actively looking uh, for a social media market, and like I said uh, one year ago. Uh, you know, you don't need to convince them that social media marketing is the way to go. They understand that because they are already looking for someone to take over their socials. All you need to do is convince them that you are the right person for the job. If you are on their wavelength, you are on their level, and you know, if they work with you, then they need to treat you with respect, basically, okay? So you're not a virtual assistant. You're not going to work for them. You're going to work with them and get them results. So if you know that, and you know how to word that, and you know how to come across as the business owner rather than the freelancer trying to work for peanuts, you, know, you will get a very high conversion rate on Upwork. Okay, guys, so that is all I got for today. I hope you get on out of this. I hope this will make it easier for you to get clients for your social media marketing agency in 2019. In terms of the scripts and what I actually say and uh, you know what to say in certain situations. Curiously, what I'm going to promote here. Ah, the like course. Online mastery, my own online course on earning money online. And we don't only go over social media. Oh yeah, because around this time I'll probably just release the course. Uh which is good. It's actually cool to see like the old layout. Obviously now it's all updated and stuff and um there's a lot more content there and a lot more tailored content towards social media marketing. Because at the time I remember there's still we still had affiliate marketing, uh, personal branding and stuff as as uh, the main modules. Now it's like uh, basically part of a bonus section. Um but yeah, it's cool to see this. And like, this is everything that you get with the coaching nowadays as well. So for those of you that are interested in the coaching, um, you basically get me as a personal coach where I basically take you on as a client 
and help you start your own agency but you also get um basically the entire course to you know look through as well you know for the times that um you basically want to get you know continue uh, on your own or on times where you know i might not um i might be busy or whatever you usually do reply right away but um you know basically this is an easy way of you going through all, all the content um and then obviously you, know, you can ask me questions about that as well so you basically got two things you know you've got the entire course and you've got me as a coach yeah so look at all the affiliate content and drop shipping and stuff like drop shipping and social media marketing options as well. Wow, it's st- even though there's so much con like so many different business models there, there's not a lot of content there in my opinion. Like we've now got much more content and it's much more tailored towards social media. At the end of the course you know exactly which business model fits Let me just quickly check if there's anything else or is this just sales? Okay, so anyway guys, I'm gonna wrap up this video. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna wrap up this video. Yeah, so like I said guys, like this is still very, very uh, relevant and it's still like it's it's good content. Um and even though this is a year ago today, um if you were to watch this in 2020, you know, it's still the exact same methods of outreach. Um it's still the loom video, it's still the Facebook outreach, the email outreach. Um, so if you are just starting out in 2020, you know, this video is still relevant to you and you can still use this to get started with social media marketing. But like I've already, you know, touched upon a few times in this video, if you are serious about getting started and you want my help personally, you can also enroll in my coaching program. And at the time of recording, this is the 23rd of March from April 1st, you can no longer get in the coaching program with a uh, basically a payment plan or a subscription service it is a one-time upfront fee and then you basically get um, a year's supply of coaching you get all of the course modules you get access to everything and obviously the lifestyle design mastery group but with that said if you enroll now you've still got the option of having a payment plan where you basically pay a small fee every single month for the entire year um, and get the exact same so if you want to get in on the payment plan then now is the time to do that if you're watching this after april 1st unfortunately you can only um you know pay up front and um, but like i said you know the value stays the same and i can still very much help you get started with social media marketing and getting your first clients and scaling your business so anyway i'm gonna wrap this video here like i said guys this video is still relevant in 2020. Like this video if you got some out of it. Comment down below if you want me to review more of these older videos and you know what you thought of it in general. Subscribe to the channel for more and see you guys in the next video.